Hello, welcome back to the channel. And um, first off, Happy New Year, everybody. I know it's a bit belated and I'm a bit late to the party, but I hope you've had a, all had a great Christmas and that. And if you remember on my last video, um, I received an early Christmas present, this little fella here, the Dwarf 2 from Dwarf Lab. And um, if you can remember, I ended that video by saying, I really hope I'm not going to be disappointed with this thing. I hope it's going to, you know, live up to all its big claims. Uh, well, I've had it now for about four weeks. I've had uh, not as much time as I would like to have with the weather, admittedly. Uh, but uh, yeah, I took it out. I've had a play. Was I disappointed? Absolutely not. I was so impressed with this little gadget here. I've just realised actually how low I am. This chair's, it's not that I've shrunk um, during Christmas. I've, I've sat on a, a low chair up to put some cushions under it. <laughs> Table feels really high. Anyway, folks, uh, yeah, we were, um, one thing I wanted this thing to be is pretty much idiot proof because regulars to my channel will know that my subject is certainly not astrophotography. What I know about astrophotography, you could write on the back of a postage stamp. Now, like I said on, uh, I explained on the last video that this, this actually works via an app. You download an app from the App Store, it's totally free, and you control everything through the app. Now, you can also use your tablet, and it also works on Chromebook. I, I um, found it, I, I loaded it off in the Chromebook, worked absolutely fine. Um, so once you've connected it, it's a matter of just literally, I mean, Check out how easy this is. You take it out of the bag, you set it up on its little tripod like that, or you can put it on a camera tripod, you put it outside, then you just simply point the camera towards the sky, okay? Um, and then once you've connected with your app, you'll find a ca calibration button. You press calibrate, this thing then does a thing called plate solving, which is just a series of photographs. It'll just sp scan around the sky, taking uh, usually about three photographs, and that's it it then is automatically tracking the night sky i mean this is unbelievable this is so easy and that's as quick as it is to to actually get this thing up and running i mean you can be literally taking photographs of the night sky within five minutes of unpacking it and just taking it out so once you're calibrated it's playtime and just like a go-to telescope it does have a menu of targets um so like um, most people have done um, who, who've received one of these, they just automatically have gone to Andromeda. Now, remember, I am not an astrophotographer. I have know very little, so I'll show you a few pictures in a minute. This was of my first night out, guys. I hardly knew how to work this thing. Um, and so I pressed Andromeda. This thing then started to turn around and do its fancy stuff. It was so amazing watching it on my phone. Um, and then all of a sudden it stopped, it said tracking target. And there was Andromeda on my phone. <laughs> it, was as, it was as exciting as first seeing it. <laughs> I was just like, look at this, I've got, I think it's on my phone, I'm shouting my missus in, I'm going, look at this. I was so excited that you could see Andromeda on my phone. The thing is as well, it did, it did only just sweep around and start tracking it, it was dead center. It was just center and it was right there. Now, I've probably had an image flashed up, and as you can see, it's not fantastic. I'm not saying it's the best photograph in the world. I think this was something like a 10-second exposure, and I did about 25 shots. Um, a little bit of tweaking in uh, a, a photo editor, but you can actually see, you can start seeing the, um, the, the arms of the galaxy actually coming through there. And I'm sure with a bit more time and a bit more experience, I can get something a little bit better. Now, the menu on the uh, Dwarf is a little bit limited at the minute, but they are updating it all, you know, constantly. I'll get more into that in a short while. So, while I was on this, I noticed that it has got a go-to menu, but it also has a man manual input menu. So, you can literally put, uh, doing the right ascension and declination um, of a target and do an auto on that. So, it's like a manual. So, I thought, well, this would be a good test. Because, um, like I say, there wasn't uh, many targets that I could view from my position. 
So this is for me where the real fun started with this thing because what I did, oh and by the way, yeah, what I keep forgetting to mention is you can do all this sat in the comfort of your own home because it's all Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connected. Um, and it was bitterly cold that night and it was so nice to just sit in the comforts of the, the room, you know, with a nice drink. You know, you can even watch your favorite TV program while you're doing astronomy. It's fantastic. Anyway, losing my thread a bit there. So I fired up Stellarium. Now, if you're not familiar with what Stellarium is, it's a free planetarium, like a star chart. It has so much information on there. And uh, it's got a search engine, just like anything else. You can search for a target and it will automatically go onto that target and tell you whether it's available. Well, on the left-hand side of Stellarium, you will see like it will actually give you its right ascension and declination of that hour and minute that, it, that where it is on the sky. Now, don't worry if you don't understand what any of that means, right ascension. All it is is two sets of numbers. You just and you'll see in the uh, in the app, there's two sets of numbers that you just you just import. I inputted these two sets of numbers press go to and my first target was uh, I thought to go for a little bit more challenging target and I went for uh, the double cluster just below Cassiopeia and again it just did its little fancy thing it tracked round turned round within a couple of seconds on my phone I could see the double cluster under Cassiopeia spot on in the center of the field of view if you like or, or the phone I was totally blown away and the, like I say I spend I've never spent so much time in a long long time at like doing astronomy it's usually too cold this time of year I've already come in but I was using this thing more like a telescope from then on and having so much fun with Stellarium typing these uh, coordinates in if you like and finding all these different targets and I was forgetting about the, um, the photography side of things so this is why I've got a limited number of uh, photos plus the fact the battery was getting a little bit low that night but the fun's that you can have with this is incredible guys and then it dawned on me that yeah this is a telescope as well um, it's not just a camera you really can use this as a telescope in the comforts of your own house you know in the nice warmth of your living room or kitchen or whatever now i after i had um, <clears throat> uh, the double cluster um, I had to go at some, I thought, let's try some really, really challenging targets. So I went for the Leo triplet. Now the Leo triplet is a little three cluster of galaxies in Leo. Now the photograph I'm about to show you, I do apologize. I had to, like I say, I, I don't really know what I'm doing when it comes to astrophotography. So I really had to bring all the contrast up and everything in photo editing. But this is the photograph but it just shows you that this thing is capable and you can quite clearly see the three little galaxies there. Amazing, I was totally blown away folks, I really was. And to say all this is coming out for such a small aperture, I think it's about 30 millimeters or something like that. Uh, but like I say, the ease of use of how you can just type them coordinates in and it, just tracking it, and it was, it was flawless every single time. It was spot on, it was there. Yeah, this last picture I want to show you, I, I thought, oh my, you know, I've realized I've not even took a photograph of the Orion Nebula, probably one of the biggest, brightest nebula that you can see, uh, even with a naked eye. Well, this is what I achieved in just sh such a short time and little knowledge with this thing. Now, as you can see, I'm so, it's probably the best photograph I've ever personally taken of the um, uh, Orion Nebula. But then again, I didn't take it. This did it, <laughs> you know, this did all the work. But as you can see with that, um, that picture there, I, you can, you know, you really can see the nebulosity in Orion. Um, yeah, I, I was really impressed with that. So like I say, if, an, if an, a numpty like me can start getting photographs like this, um, which aren't mind blowing, I, I agree, but it's still, at least I still got to get something with very little knowledge and very little messing about I mean it were a pleasure to do there were nothing I weren't it were pretty much doing it um when I went back to it, it being idiot proof it's not quite idiot proof because you're still going to need a tiny bit of knowledge about photography you know um, about time exposure and all that lot you know um, how many seconds and how many frames to do uh, but that's just you know you can uh, there's going to be f numerous amounts of videos from other um, YouTube creators on this so just keep an eye out 
Um, while we're on that, actually, um, you, I will leave a link to Chris from Astro La Vista. Now, he's also received one of these, and so has John uh, from... Oh, God, sorry, John, I forgot the name of your cha channel. I'll uh, flash it up there. Now, these are two experienced astrophotographers, uh, astrophotographers, and they are also having a lot of fun with this uh, little device here, and they are getting far better images because they know what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? So if you've got that little bit of know-how, but even if you haven't, you're still going to uh, get some decent images. So like I say, I'll leave a link to John and uh, Chris's channel. Uh, so go and check them out uh, because like I say, they're experienced astrophotographers and they're going to get some pretty good view, uh, pictures. I just know it. Now, I was hoping to do a kind of pros and cons of this thing. And to be honest with you, I can't really do any cons because it would be totally unfair. Because all the cons, all the bad things, or all the little niddles are getting ironed out almost every week. Because the way this thing works is you can uh, take the uh, micro SD out and upgrade the firmware. And the firmware is constantly getting upgraded and, and uh, sorted out any niddles all the time. Now, you've got to remember that this isn't at the time of me recording this video, which we're in January of 2023, is not even available yet. It's not even out in the shops at the minute. And this thing is pretty much, you know, it's getting more and more impressive every single update of the firmware. So I can't really say because any needles that I've come across has been something to do with, I don't know, the app not working properly or, or something, you know, um, just little tiny things really, but they're getting ironed out. I can only say good things about this folks. And if you can afford 400 or 450 pounds, dollars, or how much this is going to be, it's around about that price when it gets released, get one you're not going to be disappointed. Honest truth, you're not going to be disappointed. Order one now, pre-order one now. They are so, so much fun. Now, I did get in a comment on uh, the last video I did, uh, and somebody said quite rightly, you know, well, who is this aimed at? Who, who is this aimed for? Um, he says, I can't see it being aimed at professional, oh, not, well, not semi-professional or experienced uh, astrophotographers. I can't really, you know. But, do you know what? I think this is aimed at anybody who has an interest in astronomy. Um, because, like I say, John and Chris are experienced astrophotographers and they've got all the gear, you know, all the proper gear, but let's say, all, and they're having tremendous fun with this thing. So, and, and so am I, and I'm not an astrophotographer. And it's like, sometimes when you're out with your telescope, you just think, Oh, it'd be nice to take a photograph of that, but I couldn't be bothered to spend, you know, an hour and a half setting up astrophotography gear just to take a photograph with this. Well, in five minutes, I can be taking a photograph with this. It's so convenient, guys. When I say you just literally take it out, plonk it down, and you said there's no polar aligning, there's no really leveling uh, with this thing. You just know, plonk it down and you're pretty much good to go. I can't say anything bad about it. I am so, so impressed with it. Um, and like I say, um, I would just, if you can afford one, buy one. Like I say, I'm not getting paid in any way to, to say this. Um, I just think it's going to get better and better and better. Um, I think all the little niggles that aren't really niggles are all going to get ironed out and you're going to have so much fun with the Dwarf 2. Trust me guys, it's brilliant. Oh, and just to round up on who this is aimed at, um, apart from everybody that's interested in astronomy, I was thinking about a comment that I got um, a few years ago about a, uh, a fella who was wheelchair bound, and he couldn't read, really loved astronomy, would love a telescope, but he couldn't get out and about to do astronomy. There's the answer, guys, for people like that. You know, people who are housebound, that are, because if you're housebound, you've got some kind of carer. And this doesn't take no setup. You can literally just take it outside, plonk it down, and they can do everything from the bed or the wheelchair or wherever they may be. I just, honestly, the more I think about the pros of this thing, I just keep coming up with more and more and more, um, you know, and just purely on if it's too darn cold out there, which it can be, it can be so bitterly cold, you can think, well, do you know what? I'll have a night with a dwarf too. 
Well, I know this is a little quick insight to uh, this amazing little box. I didn't want to go into it too much techless. Like I said, I'm a little bit late to the party and I'm sure you've seen a lot more on other channels of the in and outs of it. This is purely my opinion on uh, this amazing little box. Now, I'm not going to be doing hundreds and loads and loads of videos on the Dwarf 2 because I know it doesn't suit everybody. Not everybody's going to have one of these. Um, I think you should have one. I think everybody who's into astronomy should buy one of these. Uh, but I'm not just going to do endless videos on the Dwarf 2. I am going to feature it a lot in the future, of course. But for now, I think that's all I've got to say on this little thing. Just go out, pre-order one, get one now. Well, there you go, folks. End of 2022, the same as I've started 2023 with the Dwarf 2, the first video of this year. Thank you so much for watching if you've watched this far. Uh, don't forget, f folks, to like, share, subscribe. It really does help the channel, especially that thumbs up button. I mean, we've just hit uh, 14,000 subscribers over Christmas, which has just blown me away. Blow me with blast blow me away more than this thing actually so thank you so much to each and every one of you well in the meantime folks take good care of yourselves and i will see you on the next one bye for now